Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of premium quality guitar, bag, and camera straps, handmade in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Check out their website to order your own custom creation and play in style. And remember, when you support my sponsors, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hey, yo, it's Shit Post Friday. Hello, everybody. Brad the Guitologist here, and it's time for Shit Post Friday. First up, this Shit Post Friday, I wanted to share with you an email that I got back from Fender. Uh, I had sent them a request for comment. Uh, last week, whenever I found out about the uh, more about the raid on uh, their UK office and asked them for um, for a quote or response to some questions, and uh, here's the message that I got back from their communications uh, head, and she said that uh, she actually was already aware of uh, this channel. So, but sadly, she also declined to comment and said if that changes in the future, that she'll get back with me. But at least it was good to get a response. A lot of times you send off emails like that and nobody even gets back with you. So thanks a lot, uh, Fender. We appreciate you at least getting back with me. You like me. Also in the news the past couple of weeks, you may have read a couple of articles. Uh, one was from the Los Angeles Times and the other was from Forbes, uh, basically heralding the comeback of Guitar Center. Uh, I find the timing a bit curious and I, I kind of chalk it up uh, to being very likely PR oriented. However, you know, it does raise some good points. Uh, there are sectors of the guitar market that are improving uh, and that have been growing. The acoustic guitar sector is definitely one that has been growing. And in spite of the poor sales in 2015 by Gibson as a result, of course, of all the changes it made to its guitar line, uh, electric guitars have uh, recovered as well. So sales are up uh, according to music trades pretty much across the board on guitars. Although it still remains to be seen whether Guitar Center can pull itself out of this tailspin. They did get an emergency loan as the Forbes article uh, pointed out and as this channel pointed out some time back. However, uh, the way I see it and the way Moody's has them uh, listed, uh, they would be hard pressed to secure uh, more loans if they reached any uh, roadblocks. If they hit any speed bumps, if they had any problems making payroll, I just don't see where the money would be coming from if they had one more hiccup. I mean, even though it's it's saying that uh, don't count Guitar Center out and they're planning for the next 50 years, I really wouldn't count my chickens. And my prediction for Guitar Center uh, perhaps being a non-entity uh, in 2018 is still sort of in effect. It's going to have to be a really good year. The economy has to keep going strong and not collapse. Things like this tend to go in cycles, unfortunately, and you are not going to outrun the business cycle. I'm sorry to say, I don't care who you are. I don't care how big your company is. If you dig yourself into massive amounts of debt and you're, you're standing on the brink of a precipice, the only way to go is down whenever somebody pulls the rug out from under you and eventually the rug always, always gets pulled out from under you. My personal guess is that sometime within the next couple of years, uh, probably before the 2020 elections, the Fed will probably make some changes and the economy will start uh, ebbing backwards as a result or it might take a big nosedive just like it did in 2007-2008. If you'll recall, that was also a run-up to an election. Speaking of Guitar Center, I thought this article was kind of interesting. It's a, sort of an expose into uh, Guitar Center's bunk warranties that they sell. Uh, this third-party uh, warranty company, basically they're, they're like an insurance company, more or less, but they were selling these warranties and they were encouraging Guitar Center employees to <coughs> sell these warranties and they were cold calling customers that had bought things from GC, uh, selling them warranties over the phone. Uh, knowing that many of these people lived in Puerto Rico, for one, uh, where these warranties were not even honored. Uh, so when a lot of people lost their gear in the, you know, the big hurricanes and so forth, um, or they had, you know, damage to them or what have you, uh, those warranties were not honored. Uh, the company is going to take care of those, but it's a, you know, it's kind of too late for some people. They they sort of lost confidence in the whole warranties. You know, and here's something I would say: if you do 
for whatever stupid reason want to go buy a brand new guitar uh, you know some sometimes it's a good idea to buy a brand new guitar and the reason is a brand new guitar is going to have a manufacturer's warranty that usually lasts a year, um, but sometimes they last a little bit longer just depending on the manufacturer. Uh, as far as amps go, the best warranty in the business in my experience was usually Mesa Boogie, which was a five-year warranty that was transferable. So even if you sold your Mesa, uh, as long as you registered it when you bought it or you still had the original receipt showing a date when you bought it, um, you could always have them take care of certain issues um, as long as you know the rest of the warranty had been abided by so I mean you know that that's a kind of an extreme example five years that's a, that's a pretty good warranty but most manufacturers will at least have a one-year warranty and most uh, stores like Guitar Center and most online stores like Sweetwater and so forth will have some kind of warranty period like 60 days 90 days uh, where you can return an item if it's uh, not to your liking a lot of times with no questions asked and sometimes in the case of Sweetwater even um, not even having to pay return shipping uh, on a lot of things so and I think that might be that way with everything they sell so and I'm not a you know I'm not a shill for Sweetwater or anything like that they don't pay me to say this stuff but they are a good company and they, they would take care of you so you know there are some reasons some valid reasons maybe to buy something new if you were worried about uh, it being uh, tech technologically based you know like if you're buying the latest little gadget or whatever um, and you're kind of worried about its longevity uh, or you know if you're buying an acoustic guitar and you're not sure how the you know how the bridge and the neck are going to settle over the you know the ensuing months you know it might be it might be worth looking into to buy a brand new guitar but at the same time if you find a guitar that plays great and it's vintage like from the 80s or before and that neck hasn't moved yet it's probably not going to move on you either unless you've just taken it to a completely different climate so there, there are pros and cons. There's arguments for and against. And if you're somebody like me who can work on, if you can work on your own stuff, you're going to be way ahead in the game. You're going to spend a lot less money in, in the end anyway. So the warranties, don't buy them. You're really your best bet other than, besides buying a warranty like this, is just to befriend some, you know, your local techs. You know, not necessarily to get a sweetheart deal out of them, but just to know who they are and know that they know you. And, you know, if you do have an urgent situation and you have to have something at a gig like tonight or, you know, tomorrow or something like that, that they can maybe push you to the front of the line. Um, you know, a lot of techs will do that. And I'll do that, too, you know, for if it's a real good customer. He doesn't have to necessarily go to the back of the line every time. So if they're, you know... It's, it's going to be in your best interest to find your local techs and, and hold on to them tightly because uh, you never know when you might need them. And that's going to be a hell of a lot more valuable than any money usually you're going to spend on some third-party warranty. So buyer beware. Okay, also I thought on this uh, ship post Friday, um, I might start a new segment and uh, we might look at some viewer emails and viewer messages that have been sent to me. Uh, here's one that was sent to me the other day. Uh, this gentleman, he actually traveled down to Hazard, uh, Kentucky, which is where the Walco amplifiers were made. If you'll recall a while back, I did a video um, where I was servicing an amplifier um, that I assumed was rare because I'd only ever seen one other one online. And uh, uh, he actually traveled down there and found the place where where they were made and spoke to uh, the gentleman who bought the building from uh, the company as it was going out of business. And he uh, said that w the fate of Walco was this, that uh, there was a flood uh, down there and it destroyed a bunch of their equipment uh, apparently and a bunch of their stock and basically wiped them out of business. And he said this guy who bought the place um, he said that guy actually helped them carry all kinds of stuff out, including amplifiers and, and equipment and all kinds of parts and uh, all that kind of stuff. So this guy actually remembered and uh, knew uh, what Walco was and uh, helped, helped them get out of the building. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Thanks a lot for, for sending that in. Oh, also, uh, this fellow uh, contacted me and said that he has a... Uh, uh, an old Naga hide cat, if you guys will recall a little while back also, which is kind of interesting because two of the solid state amplifiers that I've serviced in recent memory, uh, I've gotten contacted 
in odd ways about this past week, which I thought was were worthy of uh, sharing with you guys. But this guy said he he had dug out his Naugahyde cat, um, which was a cat that was sold with custom amplifiers way back in the day in the 1960s and early 70s. Uh, they would they were basically give, I think given out to dealers and some dealers may have had extra ones and they did like giveaways or I don't know what all but they were basically a promotional item. I've since discovered that the Naga doll is actually a an old symbol for the Uniroyal company and these dolls bring pretty good money on eBay apparently. There's a bunch of them on here and there's some uh, different ones as well with some slightly different designs different colors. That's a crazy price right there. And there's a cool one. There's a there's a penguin doll made out of uh, Naga hide. That one there is probably more my speed. But yeah, I'd be interested to know what you think about this. Uh, you know, a collectible like this, you know, there's never, they're never going to be made again. They're kind of cool. They're kind of cute whatever uh, how much would you be willing to pay for for one of these um, sort of rare naga hide cats I'd be interested oh another thing I saw someone had posted this on Facebook and I just thought it was the coolest freaking thing I had ever seen in my life uh, as far as guitars go check this guitar out I saw I saw one of my friends on Facebook post this and my jaw was just completely agape uh, this guitar is made entirely out of matchsticks. And yes, that's the matchsticks that you strike on the edge of the box and you know the sulfur match it burns up and you put it out and then you've got a matchstick left. This guitar is made entirely of those. And this is not just a strat copy guitar that's covered or you know inlaid in some way with matchsticks on the surface. This thing is the whole thickness of the guitar at all layers and the neck and everything is made of matchsticks with the exception of a few of the obvious hardware parts. But check this out, I mean, he's made every, every part of this thing of matchsticks. You can, I mean, the patterns are awesome. He's made the, uh, he's made the knobs out of matchsticks. Uh, you know, the fretboard is, is all matchsticks. It's just incredible uh, what this dude did with matchsticks. But he said he had been working on this thing for like 18 years uh, on and off um, and that it was a real labor of love. And I, I would just, I would also wonder how much do you guys think that something like this would be worth? Um, something that someone has labored over for 18 years and it's obviously a, a work of art. It's, it's not only a, a, a functional item, playable item, but it's a real work of art. Uh, so, you know, it hits many buttons there. How much do you think something like that um, would sell for? Or how much would you give for it? Okay, so that leads us into viewer mail. And uh, for this viewer mail segment, we only have one package, um, but that's okay. We're gonna see what's in it. Uh, let's check it out. This is from D. Johnson of Volcano, California. It uh, hopefully is not anthrax. <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't say that. I'll give uh, I'll give all my UK viewers from the last two shit post Friday episodes ideas. <laughs> and and sorry by the way, uh, I, I know I got under some some skins the last couple weeks, but uh, that's just the way it goes, I guess. Uh, but let's see uh, what we have here. Okay, yeah, I definitely remember this now. Uh, Dear Brad, here is the deer antler pick, as promised. Most of the yummy marrow smell has dissipated in the burnishing process. And what he's talking about here, if you guys have never tried to saw on or file down or uh, in some other way, you know, burn uh, bone marrow or antler, you know, material, it is, um, it has a smell all its own. I've made nuts and saddles for guitars out of deer antler before, and that stuff is uh, its kind of difficult to work with, for one, and uh, also it stinks to high heaven. If you take any kind of rotary saw blade, like a little you know, Dremel tool or something to cut one, uh, like I did and have, uh, man, that shit stinks when you cut into it. It just, it smells like, 
you know, you can think about burning hair. It's worse than burning hair if that's even possible. Anyway, but feel free to hit it with some sandpaper if you need to get a fix. <laughs> You'll notice that the two sides of the pick each have a different feel to them. Interesting. Okay, so this would have been the probably the natural surface if I had to guess and this is the marrow on this side Yeah, the velvet side uh, is hard and the marrow side is a bit softer Depending on how you orient it, it will have a distinct down tone and up tone. So he's saying there's two different tones Here's the pick. This is the uh, marrow side. So this is the non smooth surface. You can see there it, it's kind of bone like it has uh, some texture to it, so it's very porous. Uh, this would be the external outside crust, basically, of the antler, the velvet side. And it definitely has a distinctive um, gloss to it, or sheen. And you can kind of see that. It's less, less porous, harder for sure, than this side. So yeah, let's get acoustic and see if this makes any kind of difference at all. I'd be interested. And we'll get real deal first impressions on this thing. I'm going to turn the marrow side, that's the porous side, um, upward. So my upstrokes will be marrow and my downstrokes will be um, the velvet, the glossy side. <laughs> pick for being a hard pick it definitely has a good feel to it it's not um, it doesn't feel restrictive or, or dead like um, like the really heavy uh, plastic picks do and let's see just for giggles I've got a Dunlop 1.5 millimeter one of these guys the alligator base picks let's try one of these and I'll try that 1.21 I think that's this one yeah, I'll try that 1.21 plastic that we had last time, and we'll also try our uh, let's try our wooden picks as well again. I'd be interested to see how it stacks up against the uh, the thick ebony one. So let's try our new antler one first. Actually, for this test, I want to move this I want to move this microphone just a little bit closer. to the Ebony Forever Pick. And now the Plastic 1.21. the 
Dunlop. to the antler. Ebony. Antler. Plastic. So that's all I've got time for this week. Thanks you guys for tuning in for Shitpost Friday and we will see you next time.